everyone, welcome to another new series called Engines of Septa. Now this is loosely based off of Amtrak Guy 365's Engines of Amtrak series, but instead of focusing on engines that have served on Amtrak, we'll be focusing on engines that served on Septa. Without further ado, let's get started. The Pioneer 3 started out as a lightweight coach as Bud Serial Number 3880. It was completed in 1956 and was built by the Red Lion plant in Philadelphia by Bud, and was seen by Bud Company as a milestone product that would revolutionize the passenger railroad market. Now the Pioneer 3 gets its name from the Bud Pioneer Stainless Steel Flying Boat Aircraft which is currently located outside the Franklin Institute in Philly, as well as the fam famous Pioneer Zephyr, which was also built by Bud. The coach was designed for medium or short distance intercity pasture travel, with extreme emphasis placed on saving weight. This was accomplished through the use of electric train heating and air conditioning, also known as head end power, in place of steam and mechanical systems, such as on the GG1. There was also high-speed inboard bearing trucks that used air suppression uh, suspension instead of heavier springs, an airline-style bathroom instead of the fully equipped lounge style, and a thin, cordless stainless steel car body, which also made them pretty tough. The result was a car that weighed only 53,000 pounds, or 24 tons, nearly half the amount of the weight of, then of the then state-of-the-art lightweight stainless steel cars being manufactured by them. With a capacity of 88 passengers and a 2x2 seating configuration, the Pioneer 3 coach achieved 600 pounds or 270 kilograms weight to pasture ratio, a number not seen since the days when pasture cars have been made out of wood. Unfortunately, these remarkable statistics had to have sacrifices. One of these, of course, was the expense of comfort where you would have barely any leg room where you sat. Not to mention, the ride was rather bouncy and rather uncomfortable. Also, thanks to the decline of pasture rail travel in the late 50s, the car was no more than a demo unit. But, however, they didn't give up. They redid the design to make it an EMU car with dual end cabs and a diamond shaped pantograph. The Pennsylvania Railroad's increasingly antique MP54 Suburban MU cars prompted the railroad to order six Pioneer 3 MUs from Bud in 1958. Measuring roughly 85 feet in length and 10 feet in width, the Pioneer 3 coach resembled the stainless steel coaches used by the Pennsylvania Railroad for its premier New York City to Washington, D.C. area and New York City to Chicago services. Seating on the Pioneer 3 was in two rows of 25 in a 3x2 configuration. I think that's a little more comfortable. Like all MUs, the Pioneer 3 was capable of running as a single ch car train, or it could be paired up with other cars. Six, in, uh, six was the limit. The Pioneer 3 had an advertised speed of 100 miles an hour, but in actual operations, it, no, it ran no faster than 80 to 85 miles an hour. Its knuckle-shaped, tight-lock couplers, identical to those found on the Pennsylvania Long Distance trains, allowed the Pioneer 3s to be transported to shop facilities in Paoli or Wilmington for maintenance. The original numbers were 150 to 155, with the even-numbered cars having fabricated truck frames and disc brakes, while the odd-numbered cars had the cast steel truck frames and tread brakes. It's kind of ironic though, because the Pioneer 3's disc brake system on some of the cars looks very identical to the Silverliner 5's of today. Interesting, huh? The cars, of course, used the revolutionary Pioneer 3 truck, which was a lightweight inboard bearing railroad bogey designed for high speed operation. This truck would also con see continual use by Bud on its subsequent, on its subsequent Silverliner order, as well as MUs ordered by the Long Island, Metro North, Patco, and, and even Amtrak with their Amfleets and Metroliner cars, which also utilized the EMU style that the, that the Pioneer 3s had. The Pioneer 3 cars uses a slightly different right angle gearbox adapted from the very successful Bud built PTC M3 cars. These set the traction motors at a right angle to the axle instead of the more common lateral placement. The need for a larger traction motor resulted in the change for a more traditional layout in the Silverliner 2 design, which we'll talk about later. 
Power was collected from a diamond-shaped anagraph, and the control system consisted of a step-down transformer connected to an AC-DC rectifier, powered by Mercury Arc Ignitron tubes. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong. The DC output was then fed into camshaft motor controllers, which provided for smooth acceleration. No dynamic brake system, however, was fitted. In 1961, the Mercury Arc tubes were replaced by silicon diode rectifiers. The thin stainless steel car body and other elements of the Pioneer 3D design, combined with the lightness of the traction components, resulted in the Pioneer 3 cars being the lightest all-metal electric multiple unit railroad cars ever built in the United States. Although the Pioneer 3 car was advanced for its time, operating headaches, reliability and performance issues with the small traction motors, a low capacity main transformer, and, all, and an already stream of available GG1 engines with their locomotive haul coaches, this spelled a premature end to the poor Pioneer 3s in long distance passenger service. However, there was hope. In 1963, as part of an effort to improve commuter rail service in the Philadelphia area, the Pennsylvania Railroad contracted with the Bud Company to build a more advanced version of the Pioneer 3 design. Using the Pioneer 3 as a model, the new Silverliner cars, as the stainless steel MU coaches were called, differed greatly from the Pioneers. They all had fabricated trucks with air springs, disc brakes, more powerful traction motors, two rows of ceiling lights, improved air conditioning, the use of automatic MU couplers that allowed and that automatically made electrical connections in addition to the usual AAR knuckle style and a sleeker T-shaped anagraph in place of the diamond one. 38 Silverliner 2 cars, 201 to 219, and 251 to 269 were built for the Penzi, with 17 identical cars, 9001 and 9000 through 9017, were built for the Redding. After taking delivery of the 38 Silverliner cars, the Penzi took the Pioneer 3 cars off inner city operations and used them exclusively on Philadelphia area commuter service. In 1967, the St. Louis Car Company made a third order of silver miners. Once again, we'll talk about these in another episode. Now, what about that demonstration coach we mentioned earlier? Well, in 1966, the Bud Company, in cooperation with Garrett AI Research, used the Surplus Pioneer 3 demonstration coach as the basis for the first gas turbine-powered rail car of North America. The coach, now known as GT1, was to be supplied to the Long Island Railroad for testing on its non-electrified branch lines as a way to provide high-speed MU operation without the need to extend the electrification. The single-entry vestibule was converted into the vestibule cab, with a second doorless cab being constructed on the blind end of the coach. The GT1 used a mechanical drive with the output shaft of the gas turbine being connected to the driving wheels by a mechanical gearbox. The GT1 was tested on the Long Island between 9th of September 1966 to May of 1967. In 1969, GT1 was rebuilt using funds from the Urban Mass Transit Administration into a hybrid turboelectric rail car, replacing the mechanical drive with an electrical generator, which provided over 4,150 horsepower. Reclassified again as DT2, the coach was intended to test gas turbine railcar operation into the confines of New York, Pennsylvania station, and therefore was given the capability to draw power from the 700 volts DC third rail. The GT2 was also notable for being one of the first rail vehicles to be equipped with a DC chopper propulsion control. The Pioneer 3 coach in the GT2 configuration was tested between 1969 and 1970. During the delivery of the Silverliner 4s between 1974 and 1975, the cars were renumbered between 244 to 248, with 249 being wrecked and retired at that time, to form a saw block of MUs containing both the new cars and the existing newer cars. After purchasing a number of push-pull train sets and AEM-7s in 1987, SEPTA found itself possessing a sufficient number of 2s, 3s, 4s, as well as the push-pulls, which was enough to retire the Pioneer 3 and Silverliner 1 cars completely. Retirement finally came with the spring timetable chains on April 1st, 1990. 
due to a requirement by Amtrak that all locomotives and self-propelled rail cars operating on the NHC be equipped with a new type of train control, which was a result of the 1987 Chaser Army train collision that we all know. Until 2000, the cars were kept in storage near Wayne Junction. Although there were plans to convert the cars into locomotive hauled coaches, SEPTA finally decided to dispose of the fleet due to the expense it would have taken to deal with the PCBs and the Transformers and the lack of ADA compliance. Of the five remaining Pioneer 3 cars, three of the cars were sent to the AAR and the FRA test site in Pueblo, Colorado for crash tests, while the remaining two were donated to the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania in, Stra in Strasburg. Unfortunately, though, those cars have since been scrapped. I don't know why, I guess it was just, they were just the shells of the car and not the actual vehicle. It's a shame that these cars could not show their full potential, but it's gratifying to know that without these cars, the Silverliner family we know today wouldn't have known to exist. And it's also gratifying to know that with the, te the trials and errors that the Pioneer 3s had, it wouldn't have led to the development of other cars that we know, like the Metro line. So, I guess it's fair to say, it's kind of a happy incident. Well, this was quite a big mouthful to talk about, so check in for part two, we'll talk about the next silver liner, the twos. See you later. Now the Pioneer 3 gets its name from the Bud Pioneer Stainless Steel Flying Boat Aircraft, which is currently located outside the Franklin Institute at, 